Greetings, salutations, willkommen, and hello! Welcome to A View From The Stage. To my subscribers, welcome back. And to anyone else, if you want, didn't, wouldn't mind clicking the handy dandy little subscribe button down below or click on the like button if you're so inclined. It helps me out immensely and hook a brother up. In 2006, a friend of mine, shout out to Drew, told me about this band in the LA area that was making waves. And he said that they had this crazy talented singer and a pretty badass guitar player. And they kind of played the same style as I did. And that band was Dead Sarah. And we're going to talk about them today, as well as a review of the show that I went to. Dead Sarah is a three piece band that came out of nowhere. Featuring the fierce vocals of Emily Armstrong, the shredding guitar of Susie Sue, and the intense drumming of Sean Friday, the band had a couple of EPs, which is how I first heard of them, before their self-titled major label debut in 2012. They had a monstrously huge hit with their song Weatherman. Hoping to take over the world by storm, they marched onto the beat of the rock gods. Dave Grohl actually mentioned their name and saying that Dead Sarah should be the next biggest rock band in the entire world. They were everywhere, it seemed, and on the rise. Then they ran into some issues. Having signed with Epic Records right before the self-titled debut, they had had enough problems with Epic that it led to the split between the band and the label, and new music did not come out for nearly three years. Pleasure to Meet You would come out in 2015 to pretty good reviews, but it also marked the loss of their bass player, Chris Null. But their next record, which took nearly six years to come out, would be a complete and total game changer. In the face of the pandemic, the band was in an odd situation. They couldn't leave the house, so they just buckled down and wrote a whale of an album. Ain't it tragic? This is personally my favorite Dead Sarah record yet. From the very beginning, it gives in directions that you just don't expect it to go in. And man, mm, it definitely delivers with punch. And it also kicks and screams when it needs to. Given all of that, I had never seen the band in the 15 plus years I had known about them. I remember the first time I heard one of their first songs, Mother Teresa. It blew my mind. And truth be told, it wasn't normally my cup of tea, but the amount of energy, aggression, everything in there was absolutely perfect. They opened with Lemon Scent, which is a fantastic song in and of itself, then LA City Slum, then Radio 1-2, then Mona Lisa. Then they played four straight songs off of Ain't It Tragic. Hypnotic is one of those songs that isn't normally my style, but my god, this song is rad. It has this sort of slow plodding funk that I love. The chorus, the chorus is amazing. Then they played Lights Out, which is another terrific song, an absolute perfect riff into a bridge which is completely on fire. Then they played Good Times, which has a very singable chorus. And then possibly my favorite song they played was Gimme Gimme. This song is absolutely bonkers when it comes to singability, and it was just absolute pure fun. Then they had two more songs in Mr. Mr. and All I Know Is That You Left Me For Dead. They ended with Weatherman with an unexpected ending. While Emily wailed on vocals, the bass started playing the bass line from Rage Against the Machine's Freedom, which is a song from 1992 that was gargantuan. And then boom! They go into the song proper and yowza, that kicked ass. And here's a look at the merchandise that we picked up at the show. Now, my girlfriend picked up a long sleeve, but I picked up the short sleeve here, and I think it's pretty rad. What an amazing show overall, and I'm, I wasn't the only show I saw in Orlando over that weekend, so be prepared for that. And here's where it gets serious. A lot of people from Demi Lovato to Grace Slick to Dave Grohl have all spoken of this band as the group to pick up the mantle of rock and roll and run with it. It's, you know what, they're absolutely right. Dead Sarah does 
everything in their power to keep things new and fresh while not completely ignoring the past. This is so important to music as, as a whole. They are heavy without being abrasive. They're poppy without being too poppy. They click every single box for me. And if you've never heard of them or have you have heard Weatherman, please check them out and give them some love. What's your favorite Dead Sarah song? Or is there another band out there that you think that could actually take over rock and roll? Let me know down in the comments. Well, that's all from a view from the stage. I plan on getting another video out here in the next couple of days, and then a third video out in another couple of days after that. So again, remember to like and subscribe to this channel as to always get every single update. And as always, be well.